I just want to echo uh, what Lamont is saying. I, as a vascular surgeon uh, in, academic, in the academic setting, we train residents, medical students, fellows, and I experience this every day, but I'm on the teaching end. I'm supposed to guide these students through uh, invasive procedures every day. And that can be very stressful, especially because I feel for the patient. I don't want, I, I hate complications and it's uh, not good for the patient at all. So we, I, I thought a good example for a uh, simulation would be to address ultrasound guided vascular access. There are millions of these done every year in the United States and it's for venous access, either in the ICU, ER, or arterial access for procedures. And that's the setting for us. So what we did is we put together a module uh, where a patient comes in with an abdominal aortic aneurysm. He's surveyed. So the student who's going through the mod module learns about abdominal aortic aneurysms, what are the indications. And uh, eventually, there's a, a really fun, interactive, uh, virtual reality, ultrasound-guided access uh, module. And then uh, we actually do the procedure. So I'm going to go ahead and start. First, this is the initial encounter where the patient comes in and sees you in the office, and um, we have to pick the first encounter. And you you just have your conversation. You go. Uh, you talk about really the questions that you would ask a normal patient who comes in for a surveillance uh, visit. You do your physical exam. You get to look at imaging. Uh, and what's nice is this is this guides you through what needs to be done. And then also, there are also questions asked about the disease. You know, what, what's, you know, what are some of the risk factors you can address? Um, when, you know, when do you want to see the patient again? And that's at uh, a month. And so it, it's really nice in guiding you through the important parts because it's not only about the procedure. You have to know when to operate, when to uh, intervene. And that's where these early encounters come in. And then this is the second follow-up visit where the patient comes back and um, you know the patient feels just fine because aneurysms are asymptomatic. Patients don't know they have them. But then when you go and look at the actual ultrasound uh, result, you can actually pull up images with the sizing. And they, you know, we ask you, has it gotten bigger, smaller? And it looks like the aneurysm has grown, and it surpassed the, uh, the indication for, uh, for treatment. And this is just showing you how you can look at all the different history. You know, if you forget the history, you can go back and look at the history. So um, everything has uh, references as well as you can see here. Here's the CT. You notice it goes up on the ultrasound, so you order a CT scan. Uh, you have to identify how large it is. And then you have many treatment options. Is it going to be an open repair, endovascular repair? And his aneurysm was amenable to an endovascular repair which is where the ultrasound guidance come in, comes in. And this is where you can literally kill patients if you don't do it right. So let's see, hopefully. Oh, yeah. This is the, the virtual reality uh, module. This is a really fun part. This is where you put on the HTV uh, Vive headset. And uh, we have all the equipment. Um, this looks just like my lab, by the way. The team did an amazing job to just simulate what a typical endovascular suite looks like. And you can see that you're asked to, or you're guided through getting the right equipment. And the most amazing part, these, these handheld devices are millimeter, uh, you know, they have amazing tolerance, you know, in terms of sensitivity. And so it's almost like a video game in terms of getting, keeping the ultrasound in the right plane and getting the needle in the vessel and uh, getting appropriate wire access. So... I see a lot of great potential here because there are many, you may not, if you can learn the techniques to help prevent complications, uh, then you're going to, you'll have fewer complications. And so these simulations are incredibly valuable in my opinion. So uh, the last modules where the patient comes in for their, or you see the patient after the operation and you see him um, in the hospital and you ask them how they're doing, you do your exam. Um, and so it's, and then uh, there's also a question about, uh, you know, what's the surveillance now that you've completed the operation. So for, I think there's tremendous opportunity in simulations such as this to, uh, to help minimize 
complications. And now with ultrasound guided access, this should be a never event uh, when you have a retroperitoneal hematoma, pneumothorax, things like that. These are things that are very 